So, I thought I'd talk about Elon Musk going through his Tim Pool phase, which uh, we all do when we get to a certain age, you know, start noticing things. So when our hair starts to thin and is, not is it a cer- is it a I don't need to make fun or- of Tim. <laughs> Is it a certain age or when you make your second or third hundred billion? I, I think it's when you start to notice a bit too hard and then you think right. you should probably go and... Yes, he, ha- he has been doing a lot of noticing lately. Yeah. So I'll start this off with just a little promotion here, being the uh, Epoch series, the best castles, because I thought I'd promote something. And um, why not? This, this is Bo having fun. And um, we're going to have a look at Elon having fun. Because here's the data, Southwest, sorry, Southwest land border encounters. So this is just US data on border encounters. Um, can you guess which one's Mr. Trumpadu and which one's um, the ghost who's in charge now? Well, it would be epic if, if the orange line was Trump, of course. Yeah, it is. Right. That is actually the, the one that's at the bottom. So you can, uh, you can see the moment Biden gets inaugurated there. Jesus. And then, um, yeah, the, the encounters, um, well, what is that? More, more than double? Triple? All, all, all I can see is a line that you couldn't even ski down. So that's uh, 2021, and then you've got 2022, which is that line there, and then 2023. And I, so I don't really know about you two, but I'm seeing just a line that seems to, for the most part, be going up. So, <laughs> world more good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if this was your monthly profits, you'd be extremely pleased. Yeah. So we went from what? Well, the Americans here were talking about, of course, yeah. so half a million people trying to break in, and then you got two million. Well, more than two million every single year. We've gone over this many times. It's been a, 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 a catastrophe, yes. frankly. And if the media was serious and the, the United States functioned semi-normally, what would happen is, of course, you'd have the people trying to defend the government who claimed to be journalists and would try and say, well, you know, they're doing their best job or blah, 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 blah. Mm. But instead, it seems to be looking from the outside in the the American system functions much like ours, which is they just pretend this is the new normal and ignore it. It's inevitable. And there's a small portion of those who actually say something about it and, well, you know, try and point out this is literally insane. Because we're not even talking about legal immigrants, of course. All of the individuals here, the two million per year there, that is literally people who are just invading. Yes. You, you could, it's not the hardest job in the world, um, fill out a form. Yes. But no, no, just break in. I, I'm sorry to get um, a bit touchy. Well, they've not received their state-mandated English lessons yet, <laughs> so they can't fill out the form. The, the, the United States will provide you a form in your local language if you want, but they do not care. So people just breaking in. I, I get a bit annoyed sometimes with Americans who, who, who well, left-wing Americans, when they talk about like, oh, but you know, they're fleeing for a better life or something. So yeah, they're filling the form, yeah. come illegally. It's it's not. Well, quite life. a lot of people manage to do that. So no, millions of them every year. Yes. But this is just people breaking in. So they're literally invading the southern border. And as you can see, this um has become a bit of a meme. Um, New York even decided to go with um f off were full, as their position. <laughs> I thought I thought they were a sanctuary city though. They were. They were, but then their mayor recently came out and delivered a speech where he said that the levels of internal migration they're getting into the city, uh, Eric Adams, that's his name, uh, will literally destroy New York. That, th- those were his words and not mine. <laughs> but I mean, just bloody pick one. You, you either, your highest priority is either to be a sanctuary city, in which case you just let them in without limit, which is basically what he was advocating for Probably. Texas. How this works is we're a sanctuary city until you have to actually you know, do sanction something. anyone. Yes. Uh, after, after, you want to be actually take them? Are you mental? That's not how this works. Yes. What I do is I, I say I love refugees and then I don't sponsor any of them. Yes. They're not coming to my house. And uh, as you can see here, for people who are listening, uh, this lady here is uh, saying, on the possibility of the right to shelter changing in New York City, chief advisor to New York City's mayor says, in the meantime, quote, we need the federal government, the Congress, and the Senate, and the President to do their job. Close the border. F off, we're full. New York City. Which, um, you know... I'm, that's, I'm, a, that's a pretty big tonal change from New York. I'm glad they're finally there. I've just noticed that Eric Adams' Twitter bio has his pronouns in it, for God's sake. I mean, I already knew that he was just a Democrat, so there you go already, but God... Look at it. Look at that. Anyway. but And to be fair, they're not even getting... You know, they're, they're, they're just... You know, they could be worse than, than Central um, American immigrants. I mean, they're not getting the, well, the hand grenade crew, are they? Well, just the numbers. I mean, I'm sorry, but like, if you're on the yeah. southern border, um, millions. Uh, if you're New York, a few thousands apparently enough to make you go F off, we're full, you know, full Australia mode over here. I, I don't think it's a few thousand. I think it, the figure was something like 300,000 per year. But into what, into New, New York, York City? I'm, I might be exaggerating that, but it was something ridiculously high. And 
at that point, you've just got infrastructure concerns to worry about. We literally... So, it's almost like they have the same problems as everyone yeah. else. You can't oh, fit terrible. that many people in, and our infrastructure isn't built to be able to accommodate that many people. I mean, presumably the calculus was that um, Hispanics tend to vote Democrat more, and therefore we can turn Texas purple by just opening the border. And then, yeah, but the, that's Texas. Yeah. They, the the people this is affecting are yes. very far away from Texas, and now that it's affecting them personally, they don't care about Texas. Yeah. They don't care about the people that live in Texas, as far as they're concerned. Texas the, is full of backwards hicks. The, and this the only way, if I, I would be them. even slightly okay with this, if I was living in Texas, if all of them got immediately put on a bus and taken to a sanctuary city. Well, that's the, this is the kind of sick talk, though, because I mean, as, as much as it is funny, and don't get me wrong, I yeah. kind of like people getting what they deserve. This is just chaos yes. of a way to run a country. Well, we have two sides of this country trying to destroy each other with mass immigration. Yes, but it's the, it's the only way they learn. No, no, no. But the, the, the problem is, though, right? Okay, the mass immigration tends to turn everywhere it goes into a third world asshole, right? Yes. America does still have parts of it, Democrat run or not, which are very nice because they've not been hit by third world em- immigration. I don't want to turn those places into third world assholes just for the yes. sake of spite. That's, you, this is you, the point I'm trying to get as at. Far as far as what they're be... doing is evil, but I don't want to commit evil to them in return. Not in that sense, at least, because yeah, but then no, everything they're, is but destroyed they're, but they're, for everyone. But they're, they're doing it to themselves, because it's, the de- it's the Democrats who are insisting that these borders are open. You've got federal agents yes, on the border. Red until it affects them. And this yeah. is the thing I, I'm trying to get at, because like in any normal time, like this is actually a great bipartisan position, which is, yeah, we both actually, you know, regardless of, our, well, in the case of the Democrats, delusions about the world, um, I quite like to live in a nice area mm. uh, that's organized. And then you see Elon Musk even, you know, being the centrist that he is. I mean, this is why I'm referencing Tim Paul, because, I mean, Elon, regardless of what you think of him, I think genuinely he is a centrist. But he's pretty normal on all these issues, and that's what makes him this new right-wing figure, mm. according to these people. I mean, he's noticing here, this is the, the speech that they've been referencing. Where in 2021, she's over here, this is a governor of New York, saying that she welcomes all migrants to New York. And then two years later, she says, F off with Paul, which, you know, stunning and brave, don't get me wrong. And Elon noticed this and, well, correctly was like, this isn't a Democrat or Republican battle. It shouldn't be. And, um, yeah, but it kind of is, though, because, you know, they, they became... asked for something and they got it. Exactly. And I'd love to see how long this goes on for, because it's interesting that, yes, the system does seem to be course correcting as soon as they have to deal with it at least these New York politicians, I would be interested to see if this is actually how the United States manages to come together on this issue once again, which is do they just have to go through this painful period of bussing them all to blue states until the blue states sort themselves out and stop advocating for the destruction of the red states by mass immigration? Because I mean, there, are two, there are two ways to stop people from being a Democrat. One is if they're quite young, if they just grow up and their brain matures and they experience life, a lot of the time they're stopped being a Democrat. So that's another way. But once you've got sort of adult Democrats of this woman age, the only way to stop them advocating for Democrat policies is to expose them to the consequences of Democrat policies. Go live in it. <laughs> yeah, to such an extent that they realize that actually they need to tone it down a bit. I get your point. Like, if you have some people invading your house, like you, you don't invite more people in, to invade your house. That, that doesn't just, just to the other rooms to annoy the people who live in those rooms. No. Yeah. But anyway, my point being here and the, the temple aspect is that I quite liked that Elon Musk has decided to become some kind of investigative reporter. So you can see here, this is a video of him posting, and I mean, like the viewership is neat. <laughs> just to say nothing else, I, I'm happy that there's a uh, hundred million views on this issue, and this is him down at the border talking to whoever. And then videoing, hey, you see, like all these people who are breaking in. Maybe we should stop that. Maybe it would be a good thing if we had a secure border. Mad, I know. And he looks like a proper Texan. Well, he's got the mustache and hat and everything. Um, Uh, The people he's talking to there, yeah, yeah. which I I, I do love. But it's um, it's not just that. I mean, you can see here, like him taking the pictures with uh, people who have broken in. Uh, Many women and children in this photo, as we can see. (laughs) It is just embarrassing how the same laws of the modern world apply everywhere, which is that we're never looking at mass movements of refugees. We're never looking at mass movements of people who don't have a choice. And, and you've got people like William Hagan, the Conservative Party, who, who is insisting this is inevitable, it's going to increase, you just have to get used to it, stop complaining about it. Well, well, what, Immigration is inevitable. What, what's his argument for that? Does he just go look at late era Rome? It's inevitable there. <laughs> is, that his, is that his argument? <laughs> But it's, it's, I mean, kind of. The whole West, yeah, the whole Western world is facing this at the same time. 
masses and masses of young men flooding in. But also, uh, Elon makes a very good point here, which is just the point here. The US Border Patrol reported that the highest number of recorded illegal immigrants in history, over 260,000 a month, a single month. And he points out this is a population which is, you know, the population of Wyoming. Great. An entire state just coming in all the time. Fantastic. That's if you include the supposedly unrecorded number there, which is hard to calculate. But either way, I mean, just take two months then. You've got all of my women, which is mad. And uh, there have been some good memes. Like, this is pretty nice. Biden administration reports on dangerous African immigrants at the border. Disgusting. How, how could they do this? Anyway, but in between all this, he's been posting just 50 cal shots, which... I mean, I hate to say it, but I do kind of love that the richest man in the world, the American, you know, the whole African-American meme is good fun. Mm -hmm. But also, I do kind of just love how Elon does live up to the American stereotypes a lot. He does a lot of the things that I would do if I was a billionaire. Yeah. And including a, a 50 cow Beretta is definitely on that list as well. And this isn't me saying like, oh, man, I love Elon Musk or the, this segment being like... Oh, I quite like him. I, I've, no, he's got some serious problems. He is the king of Twitter, and that's yeah. his prerogative. He can do what he wants with it. He owns it. But I, I don't really think Elon Musk is our guy in will the we, sense will, of... Will we be seeing his legal immigration tweet just to confirm what you're saying there? He supports mass legal immigration. Yes, he, because yeah, that's a good thing. He tweeted out saying that he doesn't support illegal immigration, but would actively like to see legal immigration expanded massively, which is possibly the worst thing I've ever heard him say. Or Especially from a South African. Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'll go well, mate. Trust me. Brilliant. It, it's, it's silly. I mean, he, he's got some silly opinions. I mean, also, we could talk about the people he still hasn't brought back onto Twitter. Yeah. Mr. Robinson is still not there, which yeah. endlessly annoys me. To, to be fair, on the Twitter point, you could make the argument that Elon Musk is basically the only person left in the West that has free speech. And that's what you do. And it cost him $44 billion in order to get it. Well, maybe. But you remember when he took over Twitter, and even somewhat recently, he kind of had this thing where he would try and do the whole standing back and observing situation. Now, I know he's not fully jumping in, but he's uh, definitely at the position now where he just doesn't really care what the mainstream media are going to say. Like, he's just going to go down to the border and tell everyone about the massive problem there, which is the correct thing to do and thank you know, him for doing that, I suppose. But I don't think he would have done that six months ago. I think he would have been too timid to just go directly to such a direct problem. Yeah, I, to be fair with Musk, I, I, did a, I did a Brokenomics on Elon Musk um, a couple of weeks back. He, he was red-pilled on um, demographics at a fairly young age because he was, when he was like, I, mean, I don't know. He's from 13, South Africa, 14, I assume. Yeah, 13, 14, walking home from school, um, a, a community in South Africa decided, oh, look, there's a white boy, and they almost beat him to death, and he was in hospital for quite a while. So he, he got red-pilled on this whole issue um, a long, long time ago. I wasn't aware of that particular story. Yeah. I don't think you can grow up in South Africa and become like deluded to reality. No, really it's too not. much of a wake-up call. But there's the question, because, I mean, he's been going down there and showing that off. I mean, I have to wonder, I mean, what is the ideology, if we really think about it, of the people in charge of the United States? And I was thinking about it earlier, and I think genuinely their position on Native Americans, and I do mean that in the truest sense, which is Americans who are native to America right now, you know, the Americans. The descendants of the, the Indians. European colonists. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, I follow the conversation, but I hate the whole term that like the Indians are called the Native Americans. Like, well, where are these guys from then? Mm. Exactly. Anyway, but those people, what's, what's the position of the government to those people? I kind of think the position of the government at this point is, how about you die? Frankly, how about you all just get really old, you can't have kids, and then you die out as a group, and instead we'll just import, well, literally anyone else. Mm. And mm. this is just the, the numbers here. I don't know why else you would do this if it was not to basically just completely change the place forever. I mean, sadly, I think you're right, and it does seem to be the prevailing ideology, not of just the US, but most Western leaders. So if I wanted to describe like the US oligarchy, I mean, this seems to be the thing that's in charge for sure. And are, you, then I are you kind of asking the question of who benefits from all of this? Sort of. But then I want to go and check out like the, the delusion of the left-wing response, because I mean, like, you can argue about Elon's role in the world. You can argue about things he's done, things he's done right, whatever. And you can get some kind of sense. But then the, the responses to him, I always find from like the, the stooges of the state. I mean, like Mehdi Hassan here. I don't really know why he exists as a figure at this point, except to just sit around and... and so that he can spout leftist talking points and try to tell people that Elon Musk and others like him are evil. 
But that's, it, that's the only reason these people exist. Sure, but I mean, like, Mehdi specifically. Like, this is the, this is the reason I've chose him. <laughs> you in particular. <laughs> he, he seems to just spend all his life jacking off the, the Democrat politicians. Like, this is all he seems to do. Like, here he's just moaning, as you can see. Well, I mean, they're, they're all partisans. The entire... I mean, th this, is, this is why Trump should be on Mount Rushmore, because he exposed what the system and the media is. They're just all Democrats. Sincerely. And uh, you can see him whining, like, how dare you go and do this, which is, he went with a camera to the border. Shock. And he says here, you know, uh, we're all numb by this in the age of Trump, to let politicians, but why is a businessman who runs tech and car companies at the border giving updates and being hosted by officials and law enforcement? What is the point of this? Why does he think he should be there? Yeah, because, because he can, because, because, because they want because him, people because like he you, can. Mehdi, people like you, Mehdi, who are in the media, how are not doing this. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, if you want bloody journalism to be done, it needs non-journalists to go and do it. It, it needs a, li literally just a billionaire in a cowboy hat to go and actually do your job for you. It's because they won't do it. Like, of all the people to be doing the Tim Pooling, I mean, the, the whole joke being like, Tim Pool ended up doing the job of journalists because journalists just became complete hacks and, and just wanted to do that instead. Yeah. Um, and Elon Musk is not the one I expected to do that. And then the response here is just so obviously vitriol at being called out that you don't do your job. You yeah. don't do anything useful to society. You literally just sit around and say, everything's fine. It's not fine. I mean, oh, yeah. seriously. I mean, the, the graphs here are horrific when you think about the damage being done every single month. I mean, uh, and he sits here just being like, why does he get to do this? What's the point in it? To try and, I don't know. Because all the, the media does this day is read out corporate and government press releases and dunk on Trump. That, that's the only stuff they do. Now, you know who the real oligarchs are? Who's that? The guy trying to stop it. Yeah. I just, I just love this. I mean, I, Mehdi is a personal favorite of mine just because of how, I don't know, grim his life seems to be at this point. Yeah. Like, I don't know what he does at night other than just, I don't know, kiss Joe Biden pictures, otherwise he's just missing a lie. <laughs> pray to his shrine of Joe Biden in the corner. It's just weird. I mean, there's nothing to pray to. That's, that's what I never get about like Joe Biden supporters. I mean, I've met two, and one of them was a member of the Taliban. So I, I don't know who well, likes Why were they like saying, praise be to Joe Biden for giving us our country back? Well, they, that literally it? Basically, it was like, you know, th we thank you for leaving. Also, cheers for leaving all of the billions of uh, military equipment behind. Oh, yes. That was a big help. Pretty nice. Yeah, well, cousins, I mean, to be cousins fair. leave a helicopter when they leave so, the house. I mean, in, in terms of who benefits from this, I mean, it, it doesn't even benefit the the Democrats. It certainly doesn't benefit the Democrat voters. The only people that I can possibly think that benefit from this is is like the cartels, maybe China. Yeah, well, I mean, the people getting or into people the country who them. then can immediately go on welfare, they're benefiting from yeah, it. Yeah, but what, why would that be in the interest of anyone? If, that, you wouldn't I, thought they can influence decision. I, I, Cartels I, could influence decision makers. I now support the uh, Morgoth's line where it's uh, not only are the elites full of malice for, like Callum says, the why don't you just die position. Yeah, literally just looking at the Americans and being like, wait. Just... They're, they're also just stupid and incompetent. It's a mixture of the both of them. It's the fact that they want this, but then don't have the foresight to see how it will negatively affect them personally down the line. Mm. It's the same way that you prop up the entirety of your nation's economy purely on debt that is completely unsustainable in the long term. Mm. But I've got all of the things that I need right now. You know, and then a year or two later, you'll end up having to bail all the banks out again. Mm. But anyway, the other reason I wanted to talk about this is not just because, like, haha, funny, like Elon is doing nice thing, which is pointing out problem. Is the I don't as I mentioned I don't think Elon would have done this six months ago and I'm interested to see where he goes exactly with this like uh, I don't think he's going to set up Elon Musk live uh, and sit around and, and and do the news like Tim uh, but you yeah know, because six months ago that he, would actually be pretty funny if he did it because he was fairly neutral before wasn't he he was like okay you know we got this platform it's going to be about free speech and they and just, now he's just given up yeah they just attacked him relentlessly so we thought oh sod it if you're going to be my enemy I'll I'll roll with it. I mean, I have a, a great example here. Although it'd be, is, it would be nice if he'd have actually sued the ADL like he said he was going to. But. Certainly should. But you can see here, for example, Joe Biden saying that Elon Musk and X are to blame for the lowering of guardrails against misinformation. And it's just like, okay, for anyone who hasn't paid attention, I don't know how you couldn't, but that, the, that, the that, main change to Twitter that Elon Musk brought in was literally just the community notes. So that sentence makes perfect sense if you strike out the misbit. What, lowering the guardrails against information. information. Yes. To allow people to actually report. Yeah, because before, yeah. it was censored off.
But that's the the amazing thing is that of all the things you could try and attack, I mean, I mean I it's just, weird I, to have the president come out and attack him anyway, right? Yeah. I, I mean, sorry, I've just realized that community notes is essentially the formalized version of that old meme of this post has been fact checked by true American patriots. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> it, it, it is. And what's amazing is their way, the true American patriots who do the community notes are way more accurate than any of the fact checkers from various corporations you've never heard of in that era of. Facebook and Twitter. Oh, they're still there. God, I'm, yeah, I'm glad it's dead. I look them up for segments every now and again because they're always funny. How are those people employed? So, oh, mostly false, but it's true. Yeah, like, but that's anyway. There is an army of funding for left wing nobody, nobodies. Yeah, but Just, my my point being that you know, it, it, if you're going to attack Elon Musk, trying to say that he's spread more misinformation in the world is the weirdest kind of attack that they've tried, in my opinion, because it's so clearly the opposite. He brought the community notes feature to actually make things way better, and it demonstrably has for everyone who isn't lying. But I suppose that's going to hurt you. And this is why I think he's decided now, effort, yeah. whatever, I'm just going to do stuff, and I don't care. Because if you are fighting a war with an enemy, you've got to accept that you're fighting that war to not lose. Because if you never accept that you're fighting a war with them, you instantly lose. This is so, what Sam so Harris Biden, about, isn't Biden is racking up an impressive list of enemies at this point because, of course, he's, he's managed to turn MBS in Saudi Arabia, comp- uh, though he absolutely hates Biden. He's, he's managed to do the same thing with Elon. I mean, Bi- Biden is just racking up enemies everywhere. Very, very wealthy enemies. Yeah. And he probably doesn't even realize it. No, maybe not. Because he is very sleepy. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, I am glad that Elon seems to be actually doing stuff and uh, like more stuff, I should say, than, than nothing. He seems to just not care anymore. I mean, there are a bunch of tweets from him just being like, I don't even read any MSM anymore. I literally just get all of my news from Twitter. Yeah, I mean, so, so me. I don't watch, any, well, unless I'm doing it for a segment, I don't watch anything on the internet. He is correct when he posted that most of what you see in mainstream media is what yeah. was already on Twitter yesterday. I love how he's kind of just made his own Discord server, but it's Twitter. Because he was talking about the fact that now I literally get subject matter experts on anything I want who will community know whatever I'm looking at. Mm. I was like, okay, yeah, that is, that is pretty neat to, to have yeah. as an information tool. Well, no, he's, he's got a point as well, because subject matter experts these days are the sorts of people who are willing to discuss subjects that will mean you just get barred from the mainstream media. That mean that you get barred from mainstream yeah. publications and barred from mainstream academia. So if they want to be able to speak truth, then yeah, they are just going to have to go on here, aren't they? But anyway, I suppose I'll end this off with just a, a little bit more fun, which is uh, funny that uh, apparently... Literally just pointing out anything that's true in Europe will make you an enemy of Europe, specifically as the Germans, of course. Uh, he stepped in it because he posted a post in which someone points out the photographic evidence of German NGOs helping to engage in what well, I'm just going to call people trafficking. Frankly, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And um, Elon said, is the German public aware of this? And the German media like, freaked out. The Musk machine, as the head of Twitter, drifts further oh. and further to the right. The people who use this platform so carelessly should ask themselves a question of conscience. There's so no- you have said <laughs> you're a bad person for using Twitter because the man who owns it has pointed out there's, the truth. There, there's no statement of any value in there. It's just no. going, you should feel bad. It, it, feel it, bad. It, wasn't, it wasn't just the German media. The German government clapped back at him as well. They did. And I just love it. It's all over video proof. Yeah. There's no... You were clearly wrong. Here's the actual yeah. situation. It's he has discovered the truth. Quick, hide it. Yes, you must not be involved with him. But, Dan, Get the immigrants across the channel. Sneller, sneller. I, I know. I know that um, advocating for deportation, which I would never do, is enough to get you on a watch list. Yes. What about advocating for the mass shutdown of probably every NGO in existence? Oh God, yes. Well, that put me on Keep a watch list. Yourself. I, I, I don't know if that gets you on a watch list, but Cause it, that, I, I want to do that. I, I, I know. It would be nice. You've seen the Argentinian guy going through all of the government departments that he would close and go, Afuera, Afuera. That would be me with all of the NGOs. Just put all of them on a wall. Afuera. If I could yes. that, I would. But we'll end this off just with a little bit more, which is um, the, the AFD were having some good fun with all of this um, after Elon even came out because some guy was moaning his bike. Not a good look. Agreeing with the AFD, the the the, the truth it's exists. Throughout a, yikes, a Reddit yikes. That's yeah. a yikes a Rooney from me. God, you believe reality? Oh. Anyway, and he just pointed out. I don't even know what the AFD are. Don't care. I'm, I, I'm in America. <laughs> I don't give a crap. I'm pretty certain the AFD's leader has just been debanked. 
he has for running in an election. That's his crime. Anyway, but the AFD did have some fun. You know, Elon Musk would vote for the AFD. Probably would. I don't know if you remember, they put up Ataturk posters back in the day, trying to get Turks to vote for them. <laughs> the AFD have good meme game. There's, there's yeah. a reason that they're, they're like the biggest party in Germany now. In I'm Poland. still impressed by Stolen March, like two months later. Beautiful. Yes. But just for the AFD listeners, uh, and uh, we support you in every possible way. You are fantastic. But we'll end this off with one more thing, which is uh, just to remind everyone of those numbers. Uh, this is what happens when you literally don't have a border. Um, for some reason, there is one country in Europe who manages to survive with the border crisis. Is it run by an evil alt-right fascist dictator? No, it's run by normal people. It's called Poland, where, where they just say no. You can't come in. So you can see these lovely people here. I suppose I'll play some of this. We just listen to these uh, refugees who are claiming refuge from themselves, presumably. I'm trying to break in Poland here. This is a great first impression. Now compare this to the footage that I think many people have seen of the US Border Patrol fist bumping migrants as they break into the well, uh, I've, I've seen <laughs> federal <laughs> agents cutting the wire have been put up to allow people to break into the United States. But every single one of these people, they just want to contribute, right? That's they're, why they're making battery ramps. Yeah, that's why they're making battery <laughs> ramps so they can break down laws. Using the term invasion, just, it just doesn't imply, apply when obviously violent people are trying to break violently. Should, should we like, kill the sound? That, no, come on, look at that. The good guys always wear balaclavas, man. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, <laughs> got me there. To be fair, I'm not wanting to get in on any watch lists or anything, but I still think this is a very mild response. There are there, there are more robust methods that you could use to encourage them to back off. There, there certainly are, and the polls are doing what they can. But I just yeah. find it hilarious and uh, ridiculous that the United States lives in this world where they're not willing to just do the basic of enforcement, and and yet even like a tiny country like Poland with a huge border of its own yeah. can can just deal with it. And, and this is look, the thing. Look, the whole... look at this guy. I'm sorry, but it's got <laughs> swimming goggles on. <laughs> These people are just kind of comical. Well, he's, he's probably just off the boat, isn't he? Yeah. For five pounds yeah, a day, you can sponsor Ahmed here right. and his battering ramps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have to say, which is uh, I'm interested to see what this goes with Elon. It's uh, somewhat of a shift, and uh, I didn't think it was not worth noting. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, why not visit our website where you can get the podcast live, full, uncensored and for free from one o'clock UK time every weekday. And while you're there, for as little as £5 a month, you can access all of our paywalled premium content, such as my colleague Stelios's philosophy series Symposium, where in this episode, it's a two-parter, he talks to Carl and Bo about Machiavelli's discourses on Livy. And if you'd like to follow Stelios and what he's putting out on Twitter, you can follow him at, at Panayotu 90 st on Twitter, and the rest of us over at, at LotusEaters underscore com. Until next time, goodbye.